So, we hit one now. If anything, I do tend to get a, a later on in the round, steery kind of just block and everything's like healy cuts sort of situation. Yeah. So I found it hard to be honest, right? I feel like one of the biggest challenges I've had is being free. Yeah. Like in my golf swing when I've gone and played. Yeah. If I do anything pertaining to coaching, anything pertaining to coaching or exhibitions or demonstrations, fine. Going out and playing like nine, eighteen. That sort of thing's good, yeah. but under pressure in a tournament towards the end, yeah. if I'm not, if I have a feel, like I'm right, if I can build a feel early on the round and I can see the ball flight yeah. is manageable, well then I'm usually pretty good and I can right. shoot nicely under par. But if I lose it, if I lose that feel and then I start seeing that, yeah. it's like post-traumatic stress from two a days. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. so you're left with the face open. Left with the face open, it. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because the speed, interestingly, is 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 better than the average. Tour average five years ago, when we took track my numbers, was one fifteen, mm. and you're one eighteen to one twenty. Mm. So from a speed perspective, you're not slow. Mm. Um, obviously, as you're aware of it, there and you've alluded to the face of the path is is yeah. a bit of an issue. Yeah. Um, what would be when you've tried to move the path from? Because the only thing I see here is obviously from a smash perspective, because it's a it's a glancing blow. Yeah. You're never going to get optimal smash. Yeah. Because you're always been across right. it. Yeah. I mean, whenever you've tried to zero out your numbers to increase your smash to get better ball, because it's, you'd look at this and I'd say, well, you're not really going to get decent ball speed. Yeah. Because you're glancing. What is it sitting around one So, ball speed, uh, we've got um, 160, 162 to 167, but with 118 mile an hour, that's quite a hemorrhage. Mm. Because we're not getting that perfect 1.50 smash. So what we're going to do here then, so we're going to measure your tempo mm -hmm. as kind of our, our first kind of look, our first glance would be, I want to look at how fast you move the club back, yeah. so then how fast can you move it forwards. So if we move it quickly, generally what we find is that we're going to change, we're going to need different forces applied to the handle to make it change direction and get it to accelerate early in the downswing. Mm. So we're going to measure your tempo, we're going to use an app on the phone, so I'm going to record you, you from here mm -hmm. from the face on view, and then we'll have a little look at the temp, the frames that you take to okay. complete your backswing versus the frames you take to go from to go to through. Impact. Yeah, so the uh, common understanding that I have at the moment is that we're looking for a three to one ratio. Three to one ratio, yeah. And of recent times, you often hear, which is almost conflicting to historical preferences with creating speed of long, wide, and slow, and then coming yeah. down, that a lot of players are actually trying to speed up their backswing. Yeah. And um, I'd be interested to see what mine is. Uh, because for a long period of time through my historical coaching history, like with getting lessons myself, a lot of it was pertaining to and based to making sure I'm not getting too quick and too snatchy off the golf ball. Okay. okay ready to go? Yep. Ready to pause. So hold and when you get the prompt. Double plate ready. Good. Okay, so what we're going to do is run the video here from the phone through a tempo sort of frame counting app. That felt good. <laughs> good one, yeah. yeah. But looking, running through the app here then, just looking at the frames of your backswing. Mm -hmm. So you take about 30 frames going back and seven frames going forwards. Okay. Now that doesn't quite translate to that three to one ratio, so we're a bit slow going back. <laughs> so what I'd look at for somebody wanting to try and increase speed first off, mm. I'd look at, okay, can we make the backswing a little bit faster. Okay. Now what quite often the feedback I get, and you'll give me this, yeah. um, I hope, that often it's it's quite liberating because instead of positional, because we use speed yeah. to help us position the club better, mm -hmm. we can just free it up a little bit yeah. and just swing it a bit faster. So what we do, I'm gonna use this training aid here, but basically what you can do is create your own, is just use a, you know, I use a, like a, a bad towel, get a large towel, okay. and you can tie that to your club. You won't be able to be in an enclosed space. You need to be outside to do it. Yeah. But if you tie the towel to your bag, okay. and what we're trying to do is make that towel whoosh to start off with. Mm -hmm. So basically what we're gonna do is use this to get the initial speed into the club quite early, get us moving it quicker. We're gonna move it sort of a, you know, a frame forwards and then 
take it back as quick as we can. All right. So we're really trying to get that speed more during that initial phase of the backswing. Okay. And what you can do to help with that as well slightly, if you want to add something that would help from a GRF perspective, a ground reaction force, you could take a little step onto your right, yeah. apply some pressure to the right shoe, yeah. and then, and then, and then whip really it back. whip it back. Okay. So we're trying to get that this flag to go whoosh. Okay. So we can probably, do you want to do it? You would do this from here, and then mm -hmm. we'll switch over. So, so stock grip, I'm not doing reversing yeah. it or anything? Yeah. Okay, and then... That's it, step out. So what we're trying to achieve first is the step and press, and step, then pull step with and the press. cup, then get it moving. Step, press, step. Yeah. It's a little bit again. early. Step, press. Good. How's that sequence? Yeah, good. On the first step, and then use that foot press and pressure underneath your trail foot to really get some whoosh yeah, okay. in the club and that flag. And does it matter where I'm looking to get the whoosh, or is it just as much as I, I can? I really want you to get it to start with, yep. really get going with that club and get that whoosh very early on in your takeaway. Good. That felt more powerful. And that's, that's a huge thing there, the, the amount of pressure that I feel like I'm applying in there. And like you said, it, it just feels like I'm freeing up my body a lot. Yep, absolutely. It's liberating because you're not getting positional. Mm. Second, that club is moving faster, mm. so you're going to have to apply some very different forces to that handle to A, get it to stop, and B, get it to change direction. So that early phase of the downswing where we want to increase and get some good hand speed going, mm. So not a lot of golfers realise the peak hand speed is around P5, which is arm parallel on the way down. Yeah. Most people, yeah. when you ask them, you talk to amateur golfers, well, I need my hands to be fastest at the ball. Yeah. Well, no, our hands have got to get speed into the club head. Mm. So if we want club speed, mm. we want it at the ball, we've got to peak hand speed first. And decelerate. And then put it into the head. Yeah. So we're trying to get peak hand speed. We've got a critical time moment here. From top of backswing, P4 to P5, we've got to have some real acceleration in the hands to reach peak speed around P5, and then we can get it into club speed. Because I suppose when, when players are trying to get peak hand speed through the ball, they end up really just dragging yeah, the handle dragging through, the handle. extension of the wrist. Handle drag it, and then we're really just getting handle speed. Where is that? So the, the club's just lagging and slowing oh, down. I, right? I know that. I so know that. <laughs> with, for some shots, we can have that, but with driver, essentially, we're trying to hit up. Yeah. And it is the longest club yeah. and the smallest time window to apply speed to. We've got to get that club in line with the hands and we've really got to get that head to accelerate and get to peak speed just before impact. So I suppose a great analogy is the water skier, right? The boat goes around the corner, slows down, the water skier flings out. Exactly. So you turn in the boat and then literally super quick and then kicking the, 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 you know, the rope out with the, the boat on it or the water skier on it. So this is to get our super speed at the way back. So then when we transition, we've got to apply a lot of force to really then come down. Okay. Yeah. How many of these would you recommend to kind of just get six. a feel? Six yep. would be good. Let's get one more of these. Six reps. Good. One more. Okay, so we hit one now. Okay, it's really good to get, we've got to get the regular weighted club back in, in the hands. Yeah. Let's hit one, let's see whether that has had an effect on your speed. Now obviously it's going to be, very, it's going to be quite different for you going back. What will, will happen is that you will self-organise. We've not done the next phase, moved on to the, the next thing that I would look at for speed. Yeah. But we're going to see whether you as the human self-organises and change how you transition the club. Okay. You start moving it forward. So Let's consciously go. when I do this, am I just practice swing first or just hitting the ball? And do I focus on what I was just doing there or stop? stop I sort of want you to move it as fast as you can going back. Back. Yeah. With what we've done exactly there, let's go quicker back. From its set position behind the golf ball, or can I waggle? Can I feel like that little press there? You can you do can whatever. Feel. I want. So this one here, so we're not going to step out now, but yeah. we are going to feel the press under the foot first before we get the club going. Remember the press under the foot is to help you accelerate that club nice and early, get it moving quick. Okay. So a yeah. little so, bit of a shift yeah. that feels the press. So press and then really as much speed as you can. Go. Okay. Well, interestingly there, that's probably the straightest shot that you've hit so far. <laughs> and this is the thing with this, is that there's already 
you know, I get a lot of questions, a lot of pushback with a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Is that, well, if I swing it fast, I'm going to hit further offline. <laughs> well, the fastest players that I work with on the planet that swing the club over 150 miles an hour, yeah. they're actually surprisingly straight. Yeah, In yeah. fact, it's quite sh alarming how straight they are. Yeah. Now, from a perspective of speed training, yeah. if, we can te if I could teach somebody to go faster and train faster, Mm. and tolerate faster. Mm. When they go and play golf, they go into game mode. So I want to teach somebody to tolerate going top speed in practice, because then when they go and play, it's easier. Yeah. Because they bring it down to game mode. Yeah. So we call this top speed, yeah. the, re the speed reserve between game mode yeah. and training mode, it gives us a speed reserve. I call that speed reserve the par five swing. Yeah. So yeah. we can essentially then go out on the golf course and know that we've got some in the tank. Yeah. Okay, because we and we've learned how to to train with that. We've trained it. Okay. So it's not like, oh God, I'm pulling this one out, I don't know where it's gonna go because <laughs> I never train it. Yeah. You are training speed. Yeah. So it go out it's easier to play golf because you're slower. Yeah. Actually the par five is what you're training for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense? This is my hanging with the lads, I want to try and rip it as far as I can swing and then somewhere just underneath that is my game swing. Yeah. And we find that juniors do that a lot though, don't they? They, of course. they practice super quick amongst themselves and go they've got that in the tank. I think as adults we bring it all back in. Yeah. And, and, and also we think, well, the slower, more controllable, I'm, I'm going to have my swing, I've got more control over the positions. Well, okay, if your positions are wrong, I'm not saying from a plane perspective, if you're way off plane, we've got a problem going faster. Sure. But generally for players that are on plane, if they're slow, we've got good plane, the club's on a good track, so mm. we know that we can put speed through it. Mm. You've trained track. So we just got to make it go faster. And I suppose for me, just thinking about my golf swing when I analyze it and I work on it, my core issue I feel is I don't get enough rotation going back and I fire really hard with my upper body, club gets stuck and under, right? Yep. So I suppose in a sense, what happens is when I try and speed up my backswing through the shift of pressure, it actually just like you said, allows this freedom of rotation yep. to get back to that point that I was trying to force through process rather than it eventuating through a shift of, shift of pressure before the mass, rather than me focusing on shifting my, my mass or rotating as yep. such. 100%. Yeah, interesting. So when we look at this then, so we're 122. Okay. So we've so gone from 118 average with the odd 120 in there to 122. So let's say that's a four mile an hour gain. Yeah. From a ball speed perspective, we've gone up to 177 and you wasn't getting, you were getting <laughs> 169. Yeah. So from a spin perspective with two six thousand revs, you 1.5 smash, you hit that closer to the center than all of your shots previous. All right, swing it harder and faster. So <laughs> you hit it on the up three, which is great. You swing direction, okay. That's something I think that, that over time you may want to try because of yeah. the amount of up. Yeah. We know that's amount of in the club is moving because of the 3D plane it's traveling on. Correct. You would want the swing direction to be a couple of degrees out to the right sum. So that was zero to point. To that. So it was 0 0.1 out to the left, so it will then be more left as a result of. But sure. if you wanted fade, you'd carry on with that. I would say that if you gave yourself, if you had an hour of window to practice, 20 minutes pure technique, yeah. 40 minutes of performance training, yeah. 20 minutes, phone on a, on a tripod, videoing it, working on a specific position or whatever. We've got tempo here as our example today. So you work on just that for 20 minutes, recording it every time, running it through the app, checking your frames. You're trying to achieve that 21 frames back or the 18 frames back. And then after that, we then go on to the performance. So then we'd want some sort of driving test yeah, with sure. driver or freewood or hybrid. I call it tee shot testing. Yeah. So then we would create a fairway width yeah. and then we would have X amount of drives, tee shots to the fairway. Yeah. Now that would be probably punching or lifting quite light for somebody at your level as a professional. So what I might do to make it a bit more lifting heavy, because mm. if we get build muscle is to lift heavy, right? Sure. To make the task harder for you as a professional, I'd say, well, we want to maybe introduce some shot shape into that. So the fairway, I want to hit draw to a fairway yeah, or great. fade to a fairway. Yeah. If we go up another level, well, then I would go draw to left half of fairway, draw to right half of fairway, fade, yeah. high, low flights as well to so change trajectory. So we lift, we add weight to the training mm. at the right time to build muscle, to mm. get better. So we start off with maybe just hitting the fairway yeah. with our new time, new tempo backswing. Yeah. And then we increase weight into the system, helping train a little mm. bit harder further down the line. 
So it would just get some confidence with fair weight. Yeah, I love that. I love that because what that's doing is, as we've alluded to multiple times through this video, right? It's about raising your challenge point. Yep. So therefore, if I don't practice this whatsoever, yep. and then I go out and play, and let's say I go, okay, par five swing, off we go. Well, within reason, I don't have a reference for that's going to, or the outcome's going to look like, right? But if I go really hard in my process driven practice here, and I look to try and get this backswing speed faster and faster and faster, then when I go out into the golf course, I can actually take it down a notch and I'm not going to be as challenged and I'm not going to have this mental baggage associated with that because I've trained for performance in an effective manner. Yeah, hmm. exactly.